Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Doing, it seems like with the pandemic, everything's a new try as we come back. I'm getting used to, and I get, you're getting used to the same thing, that if you've been vaccinated, you can sit on this side. And if you haven't, or if you've been vaccinated, you still stay over here too, but just trying to get a few more people in that way. And of course, we're a little concerned how Easter Sunday will turn out as we get in visitors. We are doing the sunrise service and figuring out do it in the usual spot, how to do the seating, etc. We'll figure it out. So thank you for all your patience you've had with the congregation over the last months, especially since October and November as we've tried to figure out how to do things. But welcome. Good to see all of you. I still like to ask, how many of you are going home this week? So there's a few of you then. Okay. Okay. And we thank you for your time here with us. We pray you have a healthy summer and you're healthy and can come back south and see us next year. We're just praying a lot of those that chose to stay up north will also come back next year that we will progress to be able to do that. We will begin with our confession and forgiveness on the overhead. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. God hears us when we cry and draws us close to Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and end what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world. Just love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. We remain seated for our Lenten hymn, Alas, and did my Savior bleed. The grace 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to each of you from Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Last Sunday evening, as I watched the video of last Sunday's service, and particularly as it started out with the prelude while John played beneath the cross of Jesus, I longed to take my stand. I hadn't seen what the front of the altar looked like as I was sitting back in this area. It's much the same today that uh, the light from the back was shining in on the altar and particularly on that banner. A lot of times, depending on the year, the light may be over on the screen and we need to shut the blinds around. But this year, it's been coming in directly to the center. Uh, the other thing I noticed if you watch the video is, as it goes along, suddenly it goes dark and backlighting. It does that twice, dark, backlighting. And the best I come up with, nobody was fooling with the blinds, but the sun was going behind the clouds and then coming out. And what was unique for me to watch it that second time was the movement and the emotion I felt in focusing on the cross with the words of that song. So if you can see the cross and focus on it, I'm just going to show you how it goes from light to dark. I don't know if we can see it, though. Okay. You can see it good this morning. I took a picture on Thursday where the light was coming in. But just focus on either the front or the screen up front as I read two of these verses for our Lenten meditation. Upon the cross of Jesus, my eye at times can see the very dying form of one who suffered there for me. And from my contrite heart, with tears to wonders, I confess the wonder of his glorious love and my unworthiness. I take across your shadow for my abiding place. I ask no other sunshine than the sunshine of his face. Content to let the world go by, to know no gain nor loss, my sinful self, my only shame, and my glory, all the cross. Today's lessons begin in the Old Testament with continued talk of covenants between God and humanity. During this season of Lent, we looked at the first covenant with Noah, the second with Abraham, and last week, the covenant with Moses at Sinai. Now we have Jeremiah speaking a new covenant in the future because Israel has broken God's covenant at Sinai. And as a result, we'll go into exile. Here the prophet looks to a day when God will make a new covenant with his people. And in this covenant, there will be no need to teach them the law because God will write it on their hearts. Yes, the people of Israel do go into exile, and yes, they do come back home. So that promise is taken care of. As Christians, we believe this promise of a new covenant is most fulfilled in Jesus, who draws all people to himself when he is lifted up 
on the cross. In our gospel lesson, Jesus has arrived in Jerusalem for the Passover before his death. And in the Gospel of John, Jesus now predicts his upcoming death, his hour of glory, by using an illustration from nature. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. In Jesus' death to come, he will draw all the world to himself, and produced a harvest in which everyone will be gathered. Then like the passage of Jesus taking up his cross and asking us to follow, he repeats that message here again. He says, those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Jesus' life, death, and resurrection is the new covenant that will give us a new heart, as the words of institution remind us in communion. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. How do we sow these seeds and proclaim God's new covenant for all creation? One way is through our Sunday morning educational hour, which is now moved today to the 10 o'clock hour. And I think we mentioned last week, God will provide, as we were at least one te teacher short. And I'm happy to announce that God has provided the extra teacher. As I thought about teachers, they are like seeds that sacrifice their time for our children, youth, and adults in order to see those students spout, sprout, and grow. God has provided Monica Valdez, Tonya Hersberg, Don Everson, and Vance Fluster. You have all the ages covered now. The first one, like pre-K, second, third to sixth, 7th through 12th, and adults. So we have all those ages covered once again. Another way we see God's seeds is in our baptismal covenant, which draws us closer to God's heart through Christ and draws God's love and truth into our hearts. And even though we repeatedly break the covenant, God promises to remember our sin no more. In Holy Communion, we see that new covenant of forgiveness in Christ's blood. Martin Luther had an interesting example of that newness that comes to us in Christ. And run across this illustration by him before as he talks about the newness we take on in Christ with that covenant. He said, in order to become new, you must crawl into the gospel with your whole self. You must shed off the old skin as a snake does. How about the snake on the pole in the Old Testament? When its skin becomes old, a snake looks for a narrow hole in the rock. It crawls through it and sheds its skin, leaving it outside in front of the hole. Similarly, Luther says, you also must go into the gospel in God's word. You must confidently believe its promise that God does not lie. So you shed off your old skin, leaving behind your old life, arrogance, will, love, desires, and what you say and do. You become a new and different person who views everything differently than before. We mentioned this individual a couple of weeks ago, but this week we celebrate his uh, anniversary. We're to celebrate, we commemorate the anniversary of his death on March 24th. Archbishop Osco Romero, someone who saw things differently than before and had his whole life changed. After that sermon, somebody asked me, why do you, in a sense, why do you mention him? Why do you talk about him? Some people say, why do you always mention El Salvador with frequency? Why do you do that? I thought, well, maybe I should share with you why Salvadorans are kind of personal for me. Back in 1983, while I was in my first parish in 
Northern California in Livingston, I was asked to go on a fact-finding mission with some members of the ELCA church. And uh, we visited San Salvador only then. It was the years of the war. And we stayed close to the city. We didn't venture out into the rest of the countryside because of the raging war going on. And then the second time I went was in the early 90s. The war was over. I took some vacation time to go stay with Bishop Modardo Gomez and just travel around with him to the different parishes throughout the land. And then also in those years in Mexico City, uh, there were three families that I got close to that worked in the Lutheran churches there. And they were exiles from the war in El Salvador. And uh, the reason they had left their country was Three of them were pastors, three male pastors, and one had been killed and murdered by the death squads. And uh, following that, they had to leave the country because of threats to their life. And as I thought of uh, both, especially of the Bishop, Archbishop Osco Romero, and that sense of dying so that life may come forward, particularly in that illustration. So, so many Salvadorians have left their country in those war years sprouted in other countries, that they did church work and things like that. I literally, in my single days in the parsonage in Mexico City, I think I've told you stories, of one year I had a Pakistani refugee who stayed with me, a Muslim, and he would attend church, and uh, etc. But another year, for over a year, I had a Salvadoran family. I'd been staying at the Lutheran Center and couldn't stay there. So I'm single, I've got a three-bedroom parsonage. So uh, I had a Salvadoran family stay with me there. Here in this area, some time before I went to California from Mexico, I worked at a refugee house out on North Ware with the Sisters of Mercy and had three Salvadorans in particular that I lived with, with up to 50 refugees at a time. And just, and still now with the New Hope Center, etc. Just Salvadorans have been a part of my life. So. Um, I sometimes realize after I went on that fact-finding trip, though, when I came back and I had all these 200 slides, and I'd go, and I, since I represented the church, I'd visit different churches, and I'd take them through about a two-and-a-half-hour program of watching slides, because I was just so emotional from that experience. But, you know, in the same way, too, sometimes I think I bore you a little bit because of my illustrations and stories, because I've experienced that, and it's touched my life. And uh, so I ask you to put up with me a little bit longer with this particular illustration. This is uh, what Sundays and Seasons, just as a reminder of Bishop Romero's life. It says, Romero is remembered for his advocacy on behalf of the poor in El Salvador. Though it was not a characteristic of his early priesthood, after being appointed as Archbishop of San Salvador, he preached against the political repression in his country. He and other priests and church workers were considered traitor, traitors for their bold stand for justice, especially defending the rights of the poor. After several years of threats to his life, Romero was assassinated while presiding at the Eucharist. During the 1980s, thousands died in El Salvador during political unrest. And pulled out a quote from Romero that he preached on this gospel text back in 1979. And much like a couple weeks ago, he paraphrased these words of Jesus. To each one of us, Christ is saying, If you want your life and mission to be fruitful like mine, do like me. Be converted into a seed that lets itself be buried. Let yourself be killed. Do not be afraid. Those who shun suffering will remain alone. No one is more alone than the selfish. But if you give your life out of love for others, as I give mine for all, you will reap a great harvest. You will have the deepest satisfactions. Do not fear death or threats. The Lord goes with you. The second quote a few months later. The only violence that the gospel admits is violence to oneself. When Christ lets himself be killed, that is violence, letting himself be killed. Violence to oneself is more effective than violence against others. It is very easy to kill, especially when one has weapons. But how hard? 
hard it is to let oneself be killed for love of the people. Less than a year later, in March of 1980, he was assassinated. I'll take down the temperature a little bit and close with one other example of sacrificing oneself for another and so bringing forth a new harvest of God's love. It has its own humor in it. For nine months, a mom and dad wait for an embryo to grow into a person. For the next year or so, they wait for the child to speak and walk. Then they wait for the child to master the skills necessary to begin a program of formal education that might last up through graduate school. During the years of adolescence, they simply wait out the youngster. And then they wait for the young adult to get up and running economically so they can recall the credit card. <laughs> then in time, the planted seed that became the buried seed becomes the fruitful seed. It bears much fruit, says Jesus. The child becomes a contributing adult. The visionary idea becomes a full-fledged program. The trainee becomes trained. The tune becomes a symphony. And so the process goes. In today's gospel, Jesus sees himself as the planted and buried seed that will eventually bear much fruit. He models what we are called also to be. <laughs> Lord, as we reflect upon this analogy of the grain and the seed today, we pray that you would give us wisdom in our own lives, how to die to ourselves and rise up through others. In a figurative way, I imagine most of the time, not so much literally, but in a figurative way that look in those areas of our lives where we can die to ourselves and bring forth a harvest in other areas. In your name we pray. Amen. We rise to sing when I survey the wondrous cross.
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of all, and the life of Christ. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. You may be seated or kneel. through and through, and remember our sin no more. Make your church a community of forgiveness throughout the world. Give your people courage to forgive. Through them show the world new possibilities. Bless ministries of repentance and reconciliation. Hear us, O oh God. You fill the earth from tiny grains of wheat to the mighty thunder with your presence and you call us to attend to your will for all creation. Grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds. Protect all from violent storms, flooding, and wildfires. Hear us, O God. You promise to write your law on our hearts. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your mercy, justice, and peace and give them creativity to work for the welfare of all. Hear us, O God. You sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Restore the joy of all who need to know your presence. Those who are lonely or feel unforgivable. Those who need healing of mind or body. Those who are dying and all who grieve. We continue to remember Judy Keefe in Houston now with her treatment. Blanco Oberra is with us today, John Breddy up north, and Evan Bowen uh, out west. Be with each and every one of them in their times of need, and be with so many others that we remember in our own hearts. Jesus calls us to follow him in life and death, empower this congregation in discipleship, Equip children and teachers in Sunday school, confirmation and learning ministries. Give us your truth and wisdom and teach us to follow Jesus. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for our congregation as we begin our preparation for the garage sale this coming Friday and Saturday. Be with those volunteers who set up in these next days. And especially be with us on Friday and Saturday as we try to maintain those precautions and face masks, etc., to protect one another, keep all people safe that come and participate on Friday and Saturday. Give us that wisdom we need. Be with so many who prepare for Holy Week activities next week from church services and other traditions. Be with our nation's leaders and our borders as uh, we face that crisis upon our border once again of so many people migrating from countries to other countries because of various needs in their lives. Help us to somehow balance that need for compassion that you teach us, plus the reality and the practical realities in which we live. Give us wisdom, and we know we probably never reach that perfect point, but help us to stay open to compassion and to do it realistically. Hear us, O oh God. In the cross of Christ, your name is glorified. We praise you for those who have given us words to worship you. With all those who have died in Christ, bring us into life everlasting. Hear us, O oh God. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O oh faithful God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Just want to take time to bring the next slide up. That's more for the people at home to see. But just thank you so much. Uh, I know many of you are winning Texans and others are year-rounders. But uh, as you know, it's been a rough year. But you've maintained many gifts. But we thank you for the many financial gifts you have provided the congregation to allow us to keep going and doing ministry in this place. Let us pray. Lord God, as we receive these gifts from our fellow members, we thank you for their generosity. 
just a small token, a small recognition of your generosity to us, particularly in this Lenten season as you sent your son to suffer and die on our behalf. We want to respond to that love by sharing our gifts and our sacrifices with those around us. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to rise for the words of institution. Maybe get your cups out and get that first layer open again so you'll be ready when we get to that point. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Come to this meal and be fed. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Jesus shed for you. Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and keep you in true faith until life everlasting. We pray together the post-communion prayer. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your Spirit, that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. You may be seated for a time of announcements. Um, Again, thank you for observing the different changes that are made. I think by next Sunday, even the last two blue ones, by next Sunday we'll have that whole right side for those who have been vaccinated and then vaccinated and unvaccinated. It's so hard to, I mean, we taught in church, you know, everybody's equal, everybody can sit wherever they want, et cetera, et cetera, and I have to say, only vaccinated. Oh, here, I think you understand that dynamic, right? Yeah, okay. Um, as I mentioned, we have the yard sale coming up, so uh, if you haven't let Barb Smith know that you'd like to volunteer or just show up. Barb, are you here? What time should they, the volunteers be here on Friday, Wednesday? Eight o'clock on Wednesday morning you get started and probably work most of that day until afternoon? At noon, okay. You're very optimistic. No? Okay. So that's Wednesday, 8 to 12 for volunteers. And of course, as you visit then too, bring in your donations as well. Lenten services will be the last one of our midweek services. Rudy LaSoya will be our speaker this week on In Community with Christ. Uh, what else do I want to say? Just mention again that if you're interested in adult class at 10 o'clock, there'll be a class. I think they're going to start outdoors today and then see what the group does. They move inside or not. If you'd like to be a part of an adult class just getting started, that will be today. And I announced last week to fill out a form for Easter lilies. The forms are here. So we'll have this Sunday and next Sunday, and then we'll put the lilies up. We'll probably have them. I don't know if you know this happens. The lilies usually come around Good Friday. So we put them in the tomb, which 
which is the kitchen. We close the doors and all the windows so they don't bud too soon. And then on actually on Saturday then, when some, we have some volunteers come and change the appearance here a little bit, we bring all those lilies out. And uh, you just have to see how they arrive, how far they are, buds open or not, as to how much light you want to do. But anyway, those forms are in the back on both of those end tables. And I think that's all the announcements I have. Dave? Vicki's here for script today after service. I think I marked that one and forgot to say it. Yeah, Vicki is here in the back for the script orders, if you're interested in picking some of those up. One more Lenten song today. Well, it's not necessarily Lent, but it's a theme. Oh, that the Lord would guide my ways, we rise to sing.